Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Now listen to this ladies and gentlemen, your 401ks and your IRAs are now going to be politicized. What they're going to be used in order to push an agenda, whether you agree with it or not. What it comes down to is this, the reason that you have a 401k, let's say, is because you want to have a soft retirement. It's because you want to have something to fall back on for when they pull Social Security out from under you. Well, now those funds in your 401ks are going to be allowed to use to trade for companies that don't necessarily make a profit. Why? Because it's the right thing to do, of course, but for who? The Biden administration's climate agenda will damage two-thirds of U.S. retirement accounts. I've talked about this before, and it has a lot to do with ESG, Environmental Social Governance, which is the baby, I guess you can call it, or the offspring of the SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, put out by the UN. So when you see your 401k start to lose a whole bunch of money and you see a lot of your life savings go up in dust or go up in smoke, however you want to say it, all right, you can blame it on this, ladies and gentlemen. The Biden administration's new Department of Labor DOL rule that allows 401k managers to invest in environmental social governance ESG funds harm will harm two-thirds of American retirement accounts. And this person here, Mr. Kolbach, said there should be no partisan agenda when it comes to investing our funds, meaning that this rule is being put out by edict, ladies and gentlemen. No one voted for this, right? Uh, it should be done based purely on financial returns without any regard to whether it helps left-wing causes or right-wing causes. And I agree with that 100%. They are messing around with your retirement, with your savings, with the money that you put in an account that you earned with your labor, ladies and gentlemen, and your time. Why? For a good cause, I'm sure. But a good cause for who? Kansas is one of 25 states that is suing this administration over its rule allowing 401k managers leeway to invest in ESG funds by stipulating that the managers can decide to invest by considering non-pecuniary benefits. Do you know what that means, non-pecuniary benefits? Benefits that that company that they're investing in may not return a yield. And that is ridiculous. They are messing with your actual livelihood. They are going to be able to decide if they allow this to go forward or continue to happen because it's already in place. They will be able to decide whether you're going to be eating cat food or whether you're going to be eating beef or chicken during your retirement, ladies and gentlemen. Consider that. And here they go ahead and they describe what non-pecuniary benefits are, meaning that they can make investment decisions where the benefits aren't related to financial gains. Well, isn't that why you invest money in order to get financial gains? But no, ladies and gentlemen, you don't know how to better uh, you know, manage your own accounts. You don't know how to better manage your lives. Let's leave it up to the government because they do such a great job at everything that they do. And they continue, what this rule does is basically says, you can consider these non-pecuniary factors when deciding where to invest the retiree's money. So pretty much they're gonna take a look at a company's ESG score. Let's talk about Beyond Meat. They probably, I don't know, I haven't looked it up, but they probably have a great ESG score, but they're down 67%. But AP, what's ESG? And isn't it supposed to be good for us? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they don't look at the second, third, fourth order effects of the decisions that they make. All right, that's evident. Let's just go back to, I think, it, what was it, 2022, early 2022 last year? When we left all of those munitions and we left all of those airplanes and helicopters and firearms in Afghanistan, guess who's getting a hold of them now? Yes, the big R. That is a second order effect of not either dispatching of that equipment before our troops left. That's a second order effect of that, that they just left it there. Now the big R is going to be able to get those at probably pennies on the dollar. Not only that, but the, but all of the T's that they're, that they are worried about. Remember all, all of those T guys, you know, the T, T word that were over there, that we were over there to take care of. Now there's more after we left. Now they're very, very well armed, ladies and gentlemen. That is a second, third order effects of leaving those weapons there. But they don't look at that. So what are the second, third, fourth order effects of this ESG that's going on? 
especially long term did they take a look at the first second third order effects of the stuff that they were having people put into their bodies a few years back anyways i digress environmental social and governance esg has been a hotly debated topic over the last few years and it should be because it is being forced upon us from a force that was not elected from an entity that resides outside of our borders ladies and gentlemen who has absolutely no legal right to have people do this but they're doing it through the back door through banks through companies and now the government obviously is bending down to the will of these overlords that look over them i've stated several times that the president is not the president maybe he's the president you know on paper and words but there's always someone above the president that tells him what to do the seemingly unquestioned march towards corporate utopia has met with resistance among those who oppose the idea that government oligarchs should dictate the affairs of private business firms the long-term effects of ESG movement are largely ignored by the mainstream. Ladies and gentlemen, what this ESG thing is, it is a freedom killer. That is all that it is. Do you really think that the people behind this ESG, that they care about the environment? Did you just see how many planes, private airplanes, were at Davos? Over 1,000 private airplanes at Davos. And that was just to get to the airport. That's not talking about all of the helicopters that they rented to get from the airport to a secondary location, staging location, that then used big SUVs with bodyguards and everything to drive them to the actual place where they were meeting up. Do you think they care about the environment? This ESG is not going to affect them one bit. Not one bit. But it will affect every person in the world except for those people that are passing these rules you are not destroying the earth we are merely ants on this rock we cannot destroy the earth ladies and gentlemen stop letting them fool you into giving up your rights and your liberty for a dream that is nothing but a dream we need co2 to live and that is a fact ESG is largely justified on the basis that corporations and financial institutions should be socially responsible. ESG is socialism by stealth, insofar as it enables central government economic planning without having to publicly acknowledge it, and that's 100% true. In a sense, ESG is a novel and brilliant way to place private corporations under the control of the government. ESG is an economic and moral affront to the very concept of private ownership, and that is 100% correct. All right, because when we when they come out with that CBDC and they attach a credit score to your CBDC that has ESG attached to it, that is exactly what it is. Is they're going to have control over your own private ownership of yourself. Shareholders are robbed. Their pension plans end up with less value than they otherwise would have. And I couldn't agree with this more, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to this. The managers they entrusted with their wealth, whether they are company executives or portfolio managers of their retirement funds, are betraying them. And that's true. Yet, those people will grow very rich, all right, because they have to be rewarded for towing the line. Not by excellence, but by government edict, where the government decides who wins and loses. And what do you think is going to happen to you, ladies and gentlemen? What do you think is going to happen to your 401k? Government officials decide the winners and losers in a charade that resembles capitalism the way professional wrestling resembles authentic combat sports. And to finish this off, it says ESG will literally kill millions to a narcissistic and Machiavellian, however you pronounce that word, elite, however, this would be a small price to pay for personal wealth diversity and the average global temperature being half a degree less than predicted by climate change models in a hundred years nonetheless and ladies and gentlemen when your 401ks are gone you may just end up like this because desperate people do desperate things chaos in austin amid power outages as residents are seen dumpster diving at a grocery store how desperate does a person have to be 
And I'm not saying anything bad about a person that goes dumpster diving because if they're doing it, there's probably a good reason behind it. But a person has to be very desperate to go into a garbage dumpster to get food because they need food to eat. Hundreds of people were seen dumpster diving and fighting over free food. That was discarded by this HEB store after a power outage on Thursday. Grocery employees were pretty much throwing away, you know, stuff that needs to be refrigerated uh, because of this power outage, uh, because that stuff was going bad. Now, we can have a conversation saying, well, is the stuff really bad? If you're going to throw it away, why can't you just let the people take it because it's going to end up in the, in the landfill? I believe that it should be fine. I believe that if a store uh, puts something in the dumpster and someone goes and gets it, that it should be fine. It should be allowed. Okay. Uh, you know, one thing that you have to consider is, is that while that food is in the dumpster, it is still technically the store's property. However, it's the law that gets in the way, ladies and gentlemen, and it's the libel that the companies are afraid of. But if they can work something out where it was lawful for them to put a sign in front of the dumpsters saying, hey, if you get hurt in any way whatsoever, whether you slip, you know, whether you eat some food and it makes you sick, we're not liable for it. It's on you. And if people want to take that food, take it. Who cares? It's going to save some uh, space in the landfills, right? But what I'm getting at here is, is that people are desperate enough, even though they knew that there was a cold spell coming, even though they knew this, they weren't prepared. But the thing is, is that most of them probably couldn't get prepared. Because as I've stated previously, the time to prepare for a lot of people has ended. They just can't prepare. They're just surviving. And this is what happens, ladies and gentlemen. This is what happens when, when your government forsakens you for other countries and for their own interests. People end up doing things that they never would have done. Ask yourself, would you go dumpster diving for food to feed your family? And if you are a person that has a good job, that still being able to pay the bills, maybe you're, maybe you're not uh, in debt anymore, maybe you're debt free, you'll probably say, absolutely not, I'm not going to go dumpster diving. But what if you're not? What if you're just living paycheck to paycheck? What if you don't know when the next meal is going to come on your table, it's going to be put on your table for your, for your family? What if you don't know that? That's what we're seeing here. And that is why I always say that you need to be prepared. Because if you are prepared, you don't have to do things that you normally would have never done. And, and first and foremost, most importantly, you'll never have to bend down to the will of government because you'll have what you need. Because anything that government gives you, number one, they took from someone else. But number two, I guarantee you, there's a string attached to it. There's something that you're going to have to do. And or it's going to come with conditions on how you can or can't do it. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, for my second video of the day, I try to keep calm and cool, all right? So I hope you're proud of me on that. Uh, I'm not sure if I succeeded 100%, but thank you very much for joining in. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Continue to prepare, ladies and gentlemen, because things just are not going to get any easier. And I'm not saying that because I want it to be so. It's just a fact. Look around, and you should be able to convince yourself. Have a great day. God bless every one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.